Yehova mı bak? Valla mı olamad? Yehova mı bak? Yamey kardeş. Yehova kadar olma. Makari antiyos. Yehova yadonay. Yehova yelohim. Kurios tiyos penta kreta. Kurios tiyos testos. Elde et Yehova. Yel yamuna Yehova. Ibas liyan kurios. Otios. O penta kreta. Bas liyos bas liyan kai kurios kurion. Yehova dabar halal, Elohim dabar halal. Yehova Elohim, gadol gadol gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos, ton Christon isun ton kurion. Kurion imahagion pantakreta, gadol gadol gebura. Yehova Ishmael kam, Yehova shamma. Yelnakum Yehova. Yel nakum yapa. Netzak Israel la shaker. Gava gava. Triembos Yehova. Isus Christos pantagreta. Gadol gadol gebeba. Moravos nasa. Elohim Elohim. Ileila yeshalot. Yehova malak. Yehova malak. Olam olam ad. Yehova Elohino, Yehova Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Zaan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes. Dikae Sune, and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Yehova ihe Elohim, Yehova ihe Elohim. Ileila Yishalut, Yehova Malak, Jesus Christos, Gadol Gadol, Gebur. Direk Emuna Bakar, Mishfat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Eliam Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, eunuch, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sidkenu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing to learn the pale wonders of His word. As there are many, many great things for us on this earth, which Lord God the Father teaches to us through the nature. And yet man has been a rebellion not to realize nor understand the impact of truth in Christ. One more day being renewed in our lives to learn how pure is the word of Lord God, which goes to divide asunder between the soul and the spirit, and joins in the matter, having to learn the intentions of our heart and the critics of our thoughts. Use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins, and let's come back and continue. 
what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. To the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique value and wonders of this word. Infinitely divine Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for one more day, O Lord, given to us to have fellowship with thee through the word. All the days of this life, O Lord, on this earth. We have only one thing, O Lord, to do, to cherish and nourish in your word every day. And such a great thing you have given for us in your word that none on the earth can ever enlighten our minds to look. What a great privilege you have given to us to understand besides of the nature itself how powerful you are. But yet, O Lord, though you have made man in your image, man is not able to know the importance of carrying this cross every day, becoming, his disi becoming your disciple and growing up into gravitas and in return going and making disciples of all the nations. So, Father, you are given one more day for us to be about like a trumpet and cry out like a voice in the wilderness as the traversing, as the donkey of Balaam goes to teach. So, Father, give us this strength to cry out your Pathagomai words to these people so that they could realize your parallel wonders of your truth. So, Father, as we study them, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In Psalms chapter 104, in verse 24 and 25, How manifold are their works of Jehovah! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of their riches. Yonder is the great and wide sea. Therein are moving things innumerable, living creatures, small and great. And here if you can look and understand, dear brethren, how frail a man will look before that nature you can understand. He says, if we rightly regard creation, we shall be filled with wondering fear at its evidence of the amazing power and wisdom of its great creator. The earth is full of his riches. As to mankind, every individual is different, not even identical twins are fully identical. The variety of animals too is astonishing. Scientists tell us also that no two snowflakes have ever been found to be identical. Who decided this phenomenon? But we are also informed that the weight of the total ins insect population of the world, insect population of the world, is more than that of all the humans and land animal population combined. It takes quite a few flies to equal the weight of an elephant. Does an infinitely great creator take interest in such tiny insects? And how much more we have to be in the image of God to worship Lord God in fear and in truth. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 114 that in the great and wide sea are moving things innumerable. He did not learn this by observation but by God's revolution. Scientists have recently concluded that the combined weight of all land creatures, mankind, animals, birds and insects is practically nothing compared to that of the creatures in the sea. For land creatures, except for birds and flying insects at times, are confined to one level of existence, while the seas are stored with creatures at every level. More than that, even the surface area of the land is less than one-third of the surface area of the seas. God's marvelous works of power in creation are only surpassed by the work of His grace in redemption. Such a marvelous revolution what Lord God the Father has given for us in His mind to be occupied in day-by-day day learning the truth. 
And in order to day by day learning this truth, we have to come and look upon in the standards where even the heavenly realm, the way how it goes to help any human being on this earth to come to his knowledge. In Matthew chapter 3 in verse number 16, we can read as the word says, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning upon him. And here one could write a book on this passage for the very first time in the Bible. The heavens are open for a man on earth. The Holy Spirit identifies with this man, who is at the same time God's eternal Son, and the Father's voice is heard saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. What blessed mysteries are revealed! But also what a perfect model is placed before the eye of faith, because we have to worship Him. So after His life of service, death, burial, and, dis and resurrection, the Lord Jesus Christ ascended into the heaven and was received by God and given the place of honor. The object for the heavens on earth was now himself received into the heavens. There he has become the supreme object for his people on earth. Christ's present position is the basis for the free access Christians now have. Christ glorified is the reason for the rapture. A heavenly people now on earth, as we call the church age, will be caught up from this earth and brought into heaven, where the marriage supper of the Lamb will take place. After that, the heavens will be opened in judgment, as Revelation 19, verse 7 through 21 goes to teach. Those who reject God's offer of grace will not have another chance. And we can find the final location of opened heavens will be during the millennium reign of peace. This was indicated by many prophets and confirmed by the Lord to Nathaniel in John chapter 1, verse 50 through 51. As the Son of Man, he will be the center of the whole universe and the link between heaven and the earth. Angels will ascend from and descend upon him in a continuous public display of blessing a flow of prayer and response into heaven and a stream of blessing from heaven. So here you have many things which you have to be looking upon the pattern of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which he, which he has done in his flesh. And now he says the same pattern for us to understand if we have been called to be as heavenly citizens and how it could be done. It could be done provided you flee away from the stupid things as First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 and 12 emphasizes that the love of money is the root of every evil which some having, and some having aspired after have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, piety, faith, love, endurance and meekness of spirit. Strive earnestly in the good conflict of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, to which thou hast been called, and hast confessed the good confession before many witnesses. And here if we can look, dear brethren, the word flee means to run away. Although it also speaks of separation and cleansing, as in 2 Timothy 2, 21 and 22, and 2 Corinthians 6, 17 through 18, separation has two phases. First, to flee from whatever it is odd with God, and second, to flee to God, our source of strength and blessing. You know, that's what we have been able to tell. The very first thing it demands is that you have to look upon your reports, vexation reports. So you have to look deep down and dig and take the word of Lord God accurately every time. So here, separation says first, make up to build up a wall of fortification, take up your cross, come to learn the word of Lord God. Everything begins by first separation. If you haven't been separated, then it's not possible for it to become what the will of Lord God the Father in your life is all about. So first it begins with separation. So dear brethren, that's the word meant to say flee. An excellent example of this is found in Genesis 39 in the life of Joseph. He flees and he is able to be used as a vessel to honor, even in ungodly setting. The underlying principle is that blessings from God are hindered when we are in compromise or are knowingly partner in that which is evil. You know, today we have to be very, very 
important to know about these things because at one end the nature is superior to obey Lord God and perform the will of Lord God. But the man who has been made in the image of God, besides given to him the pleasure of Paltima privileges, who is not able to flee away from lustful patterns of the old sin nature, and he has to perform the will of Lord God the Father. So here you need to look. So if you have been compromised with the world and if you are a knowing partner to that which is evil and today you may say what is that you have to compromise with the world you have been compromised in the world for one simple essence neglecting the word of God and the people are not able to realize how much you are neglecting the word of Lord God in this life the first compromise is when you neglect to take up your cross every day and come back to learn the word of Lord God as the word of Lord God demands. At the other end, you don't have those pastor teachers like they can give you thorough understanding of the word of the Lord God. That's what we can find over here. All the time, Satan goes to put pressure upon mankind not to learn the truth. Over here in Second Chronicles, we can find a passage for us. In chapter number 35, in verse number 3, And he said unto the Levites, The thought all Israel. The word thought begins with the first one called to be Bina, that meant to say the fifth fold of the spirit, as it has been called to be the spirit of understanding, where they have their body and the thought process in doctrine. And then the second word, what we find over here, is called to be Mabon. Because the people who can teach, the word of Lord God emphasizes, the people who can teach, these are of a special caliber because they have this process of giving you thorough understanding. So the category of the people who are called to be Mabon over here, they go to give you very, very clear, clear cut of understanding in the Lord's mind. So they give to you to be like a teacher. They go to instruct. You know, that's why today many people don't realize what is this pastor. They think that the title of a right this one for a pastor teacher, which has to be PT, they have made it to become from pastor to reverend. Actually, it should be pastor teacher. From there, they became pastor. From pastor, they become now as reverend. From reverend, they become now uh, most holy reverend or XYZ, whatsoever, and the things, what all the titles they keep. Like the titles of what we can call as bishop or presbyteros or whatsoever stupid titles. Christ, O Lord our God, calls you all to be pastor teacher because Mabon is nothing but to give you understanding as a teacher can do that. And that has the gift given by Lord God the Father in heaven at the moment of salvation. By faith alone in Christ alone, when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, looking upon the way you are capable you know, Lord God the Father goes to train you up and you have to be faithful enough in learning that word. A temporary sacrifice of your life in everything on this earth. It's not just by overnight you're going to get a dream and you can say, Lord, I have been found this dream and vision, I'll become a pastor for you. No. You should have that gift given by Lord God the Holy Spirit. You know, today many people don't understand why they have been able to come to the ministry. But the word of Lord God says you have been given the gift as poiman didaskalas, or the word should be very accurately teaching shepherds. That's what the real translation could mean. It's not just a shepherd who is going to be a teacher, but it has to be teaching shepherds. It should be, first of all, the man who has been capable of teaching. In the original language of the scriptures, and that requires out of Bible, the things pertaining to an academic discipline in the standards of knowing Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic as well. So that you can go back in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, and iota upon iota. That's what you have been called over here. Every time... Whenever you come to look upon the standards of the Lord's mind, you have so many things to look and consider and make it up in this life because Lord God the Father has so graciously granted to every man on this earth such sort of a great work to understand the Lord's mind 
and they have to go and make in return disciples of all the nations. That's what we're able to look upon the conviction ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, first to make them to understand about the unbelieving way of life. When the unbelievers are not able to believe in Christ, you believers have been given this ministry of reconciliation, ministry of ambassadorship, so that when you open up your mouth, it has to be seasoned with salt so that you can come back and train them up in the standards where the word of Lord God demands that. But today, dear brethren, people are not able to realize what is happening in this church age. Because when he says the category of the people are Mabon, they have to be twice. These are Mabon of the category who are holy unto the Lord God. Therefore, every time you come back to take up the word of Lord God, be sure that you are separating from this world. No compromise with this world. That's what he said in First Timothy chapter 6 over here. The very first thing as a pastor, teacher, bona fide duty is that you run away from the things pertaining to this worldly lusts. Therefore, he says, blessings are hindered when you compromise. When you compromise or you are knowingly becoming a partner in that which is evil. So that he says, whether in the church or in the world, both compromise and wrong partnership keep us from being used as vessels to honor your compromise and wrong partnership. A pastor teachers have become today that something which is called to be entertaining clowns. They don't realize they have to be teaching shepherds. Mabon, bin Mabon. They have to give you deep understanding. The same thing what we can look up this passage of Second Chronicles chapter 35. Even the word comes as parash. Because over here when we look upon this word, he says, the category of the people who will be associated there will be the men who are associated with parash kind of teaching because they don't to give you very clear distinction mark of understanding the word of God. So dear brethren, they go to spread out the law of the Lord of God as we read in Nehemiah chapter 8. It is in verse number 7 and then followed by Nehemiah chapter 8 in verse number 8. Here we can open your Bible. Here we can understand the word parash which says saying that they read in the book in the law of God distinctively. The word distinctively is called to be parash. The very first thing what bin mabon caliber of pastor teachers will be, they go to first look upon your mouth and they love to renovate your thinking so that now you can open up your mouth in understanding of the thought process in Bible doctrine. That's the word parash. Open up your mouth in the standards of your head being renovated in Bible doctrine so that you can spread forth. So that now they can become, you know, that's the real purpose of this pastor teachers. Because now Christ, our Lord of God, what he did, he did was teaching all the days of this life. He taught them parables, beginning with parables, uttering them knowledge with parables. He taught them the divine revolution, what would happen. He taught them everything, what a man of life can be on the face of the earth. So that every believer could be a mouth of great truth. But today, every believer's mouth, if you can look, being not trained by so-called pastor teachers of Min Baban or teaching shepherds, the mouth of every individual believer, they have become like the poison snake. When all have opened their mouth, it has become like what we can call in Romans chapter 3, emphasizing the word that these are like this open specular. So, dear brethren, he says, over here in Romans chapter 3, in verse number 1, What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. The same thing today for you also. Completed can of scripture, the word of Lord God has been given. And are just simply looking outward circumcision or outward thinking to be great rather than learning the word of Lord God. So he says, for what if some did not believe, then shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? So he says, God forbid, yes, let God be true, but let every man be a liar, as it has been written, that you might be justified in thy sayings and might overcome when you are judged. 
But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. Now we look, God forbid for then. Then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet I am judged as a sinner, and not rather as we are slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, Let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have proved before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Now it says, as it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. You know, this is what is happening. And the words that have been written over here, they have been taken up from the passages of what we can look from the chapter of Job. So he says in chapter 14 in verse number 4, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? He said, Not even a single one. And then in Job chapter 15 in verse number 14, What is man that he should be clean? And he is which are born of a woman that he should be righteous. The same thing in Job chapter 15 verse number 16. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water? Why? Because he, the man, can be justified, he asks in Job 25, 4, How then can a man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Because, he says again in Jeremiah 17, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things, and it is desperately sick. Who can know it? The same thing in Matthew 15 or Mark 7. He goes to emphasize the teaching, saying that, We have been all the time in the lustful patterns of the old sin nature of Galatians 5, 19-21. So, dear brethren, when he said, emphasizing these words, he meant to say that it has been written, there is none righteous, no, not even one. And today people are thinking that they can be good. So he said in Romans 3.23, All have sinned and come short of the glory or the essence box of God. Just look upon the way the life they have been led. But through Christ, O oh Lord of a God, your essence box has been given a chance to believe in that righteousness and justice of Lord God the Father, which could be the holiness of Lord God. So here you look, he says, There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. What understanding the word sun emi, and the meaning of the word sun emi followed by the word bin with shakel. And what happens to be prudent? The very first thing is no matter what may be the pressure, they become as grammatias, and in return they want to go and make disciples of all the nations. You know, the word sakel, which has been found in the pictographical representation, could very closely match what we find in Genesis chapter 37. When we look upon the way how Joseph comes to look upon his brethren, they say that they, when his father asks, first of all, to say that, Go, I pray thee, in verse 14 of Genesis 37, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with thy flock. The word well meant to say shalom, whether they are in the process of peace. So he says, the word shalom meant to say the discipleship program and the thought which they have to flow in their blood. And bring me word again. So he sent him out of a vale of Hebron and he came to Shechem. And the vale of Hebron meant to say valley of Hebron. A certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flock. And the man said, They departed hence, and have heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. The word Dothan meant to say, Dear brethren, as two wells. That's what you can find the word. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. Now you see. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto him, they conspired against him to slay him. You know, when you find this word conspired, it is called to be nakel. And what does it mean to say? We are going to make his vigor and valor not to be grammatious program in the Lord. So that he cannot go and make discipleships in the law. That's conspiracy. The same thing what Satan all the time does in the lives of these people. Because when the word of Lord God says there is none righteous and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, it meant to say in simple words that these people 
are not understanding God. They are not seeking after God. Because if they would understand God, they would find the word Bina, the fifth fold of the spirit, called to be as discernment, which is making up their body to have the vigor and valor in Christ. And the second one, what we can call over here is Sakel, which is nothing but no matter what may be the pressure, they have to be grammatious program. They have to be discipleship program. This is what we have been called over here. So when the man, when the brethren, they saw him far off, they went along to conspire. What they conspire? They say, we shall make all this vigor and valor not to grow up into grammatias. You know, therefore, your own family members will be your enemies. That's what Christ the Lord of God said. Who are the enemies? Their own family members. Because you think I come to give peace? No. Who are your enemies? The own family members which hinder you not to learn word of Lord God. These are your first enemies. Because how clear the word of Lord God teaches to us in simple terms, emphasizing that no matter what may be the pressure, you have to grow up into grammatias. And growing up into grammatias is not finished. You know, you think that you have manufactured a product. Manufacturing that product is not enough. It has to be sent into practical use. Therefore, before it could be sent into practical use, you go to test it. After testing, you know the fatigue points of that and you overcome them with a new plan, a new model. And then you make sure it is going to work in the market. That's why Christ also trains you up. Therefore, he said, flee from youthful lusts. Because the evil for all on this earth is the root cause by money. That's why today we can find many churches having many problems because of having that treasury box. So he says, don't compromise. Don't be partner in the world. If you compromise with the word of Lord God, then you become partner in the world. So when you're becoming partner to the world, you cannot sow my Christ. You're going to become hindering for your own blessings. You cannot be used as vessels of honor to God. So don't compromise. So here he says the same thing. Have understanding. Don't be into the world. Because the word over here in Romans chapter 3, which we look, he says in verse number 10, emphasizing that there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth God. That meant to say what? Be not sakil. The way how the brothers are conspiring against Joseph, the same thing what today the pastors are doing against their own brethren in the church. They're not able to give them the accuracy of clear thought. When you have been guided by the Holy Spirit of God, the very first thing is you will have great peace. You will tell them nothing but the truth, whether they follow it or observe it or look into it or not. Thus said the Lord God, you will tell them. And that's what every believer has to join as disciple and grow up into grammatics in the presence of Lord God the Father. That's what you have been called over here in this church age. But people are not joining as disciples. People are not able to grow up into grammatics in the sight of the Lord God. So he said, as it has been written, there is none righteous, no, not even one. And then he said, there is none that understandeth him. There is none that seeketh after. The word called to be ek zatio. The meaning of the word ek zatio is nothing but they don't darash. What is the meaning of darash? They don't go to make up to get every thought in their head to be renovated in the thought process of Bible doctrine. There is no darash. No, that's the great problem for us. No darash. So he says, no darash. And then, furthermore, these people will not have the guarding process to guard. Because no matter what may be the pressure, they don't use the vigor and valor to renovate their head in doctrine. So there is no guarding process as well. So no darash, no natser, and there is no bakash as well. The meaning of the word bakash is nothing but their body from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun will never come to transform into the thought process of doctrine. So he says the three words over here. The people who seek after Lord God, first they go for the Raj. 
Then they come for Natser. And then they become Bakash. These are the three words. So when you're going for the first one called to be as Daraj, they make a diligent search to make sure every thought in their head is being brought into the thought process of Bible doctrine. So he says, there is none who seeketh him. There is none who is having this sakel kind of understanding. Why? Because they have been put maximum pressure to change the vigor and valor, not to grow up into grammatias. And today I've been in a company of fools, but we find in Psalms as he emphasizes, blessed are the one who said, come, let us go to the house of Lord God and worship him, because how beautiful and am amiable are the things in the house of Lord God, as he prays to say, Lord, this is what I have desired unto thee. And what did he desire? To spend one day in your courts. You know, there you learn doctrine, there you learn the truth of your life. It is better to be little with the truth rather than to have more without having even an ounce of truth in their churches. Better be two or three people for the solid truth because one day which you presently spend in the presence of Lord God the Father, that can make you all to be like thousand years. That's what we find the passage over there. Psalms chapter 84. Because these people are spending their time in the presence of Lord God the Father because they know how valuable and how truth it is. Because it says over here, a psalm for the sons of Korah, how amiable are the tabernacles that meant to say what how passion invoking because they come over here to get into making every thought doubly filtered again every thought doubly filtered they're double twice twice they get not just once but make sure confirmation twice they get the thoughts into the tabernacles of Lord God and in the tabernacles as we call Shekinah is nothing but making up your thought process to grow up into grammatics in the vigor and valor of Bible doctrine so he said my so longeth, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. You know, this is what? The strengthening of your heart is what Lord God the Father does all the time. Why? Because people are rejecting the word of Lord God to the core. You know, the same thing what is said in Psalm 119 in verse 136, emphasizing the things pertaining to rivers of water flow from my eyes because they have forgotten your word. They're not able to guard your word. And the zeal hath consumed me because enemies have forgotten your word, says 139th words of the 119 Psalms. So here, dear brethren, the same thing he said, My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. And today people are coming to the church, what for? They come to the church to cry out their needs to be supplied. They want the Kassim kind of ministry, what we said in the life of Saul, seeking for divination in the witch of Endor, rather than To'ar kind of ministry, where you should have an absolute seal of authority that have been renovated in the standards of Bible doctrine in your mind. Samuel, what form it was, he says, He said, the woman says, he is like a man, Zakain, who has been well mature who has been grown up and that's what we need to look upon our form why you come to the church crying out in your flesh crying out in your heart what for living God where he can come to teach you sound and accurate Bible doctrine so dear brethren you can find emphasizing the sparrow hath found an house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her egg, even thine altars, O Lord of, of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they dwell in thy house, they shall be still praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca, making it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. And then he says over here, they go from strength to strength. The word strength over here is called to be Kali ill, that is, they build up a wall of fortification like a discipleship program. Therefore, he said, they go from that to that, that went from strength to strength, from Kali to Kali ill. So they build up a wall of fortification day by day for discipleship program. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give here a God of Jacob, Selah. Behold a God of a shield and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. 
I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know, that's what people are not able to realize, why they have to come to church every day. You know, they should find to look what are the great deep things, Daraj. Then they go to Natser, they go to Bakaj. This is what we've been the procedure for us every day. So, dear brethren, he says, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The word walking is again halak. They join as disciple and they grow up into grammatius. How they walk, they walk upright, having an absolute standards of authority upon their blood, so that they live in their flesh and they live and cry out in their heart to seek God every day. That's the only sole reason why I've been kept alive. People are foolishly concluding their life to be ended up by 70 or 80 years saying that we have been this, we have been that. That's a life for sinners. But they that walk with Christ, O oh Lord of God, they have a life like a challenging one of Moses, 120 years in the presence of Lord God. Because they have this work to walk uprightly. They make up their blood to be authoritative in the word of Lord God. So, the things what we have read over there, in emphasis of Psalm 104, verse 24 and 25, at the beginning of this tape, you can understand how much great Lord God the Father has designed man, and the weight of all the insects being put together, they can easily outweigh the creation of man. The things what we have in the sea, one third part we have only the land, the remaining things we are going to have the sea. So he says the sea creatures, they cannot be dig deep and still look how much they are still. And how much they could be glorious ones in the presence of Lord God the Father. Because, he says, dear brethren, scientists have recently concluded that the combined weight of all land creatures, animals, mankind, birds and insects is practically nothing to that of the creatures in the sea. For land creatures except the birds and the flying insects sometimes are confined to one level of existence, while the sea are stored with creatures at every level. Therefore he says, more than that even the surface area of the land is less than one third of the surface area of the seas. Again, if we can look upon the things pertaining to the Creator, he says that the, that the different, that which is as to, uh, the, the scientist tells us also that no two snakeflakes that have been found to be identical. Who decided this phenomenon? But we are also informed that the weight of the total insect population of the world is more than that of all the humans and land animal population combined. So he says that, that the weight of the total insect population of the world they are outweighing, they are more than what all of the humans and land animal population combined. So it takes quite a few flies to equal the weight of an elephant. Does an infinitely great creator take interest in such tiny insects? Then how much more he takes upon you so that you can live minimum 120 years? How much meticulously he might have designed you? How much of your time he wants you all to spend in the war of Lord God every day? How much? Because it said in Matthew 4, 4 of Deuteronomy chapter 8, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of Bible doctrine. Therefore the remata declaration of the pastor teacher, the sword of the spirit, Ephesians 6, 17. So dear brethren, you need to look. How much? marvelous works of power in creation are only surpassed by the work of His grace in redemption. You know how many great things we have to learn, how many great things we have to understand. But we are simply wasting the valuable grace of God. Such a marvelous grace of Lord God. Because you are not able to look one day is better to spend in the presence of Lord God the Father 
because he says that it is better than a thousand. So he says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. What are the tents of wickedness? Wicked people will be all the time far away from real thinking of the word of God. That's what we illustrated yesterday. The mirror image should be the word of God. Every man, if they're true like a mirror image in the word of Lord God, they would rather be the mouth of Lord God rather than becoming dumb dogs who don't know how to bark because their mouths have been filled with lies. They don't become the tongue of the land to open up their mouth. That's what we read in Isaiah 56. The shepherds of them, they become dumb dogs, dogs that cannot bark. You know why they cannot bark? Because they're not like a mirror image for the truth. They're not able to become the mobin kind of teacher, so they're not like the teaching shepherds. It takes time, dear brethren, to learn the word of Lord God. If you're still compromised into the world rather than knowing the word of Lord God on this earth. If you still compromise, you will never become a vessel of honor. Lord God cannot use you. In Genesis chapter 12, if you can look how Abraham was being called by Lord God, he said, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house and to a land that I will show. And Abraham did it, and he was able to be used as a vessel of honor, so he was being blessed to God. The same thing what we can look over here in Joseph's case of Genesis 39. He said, how can I sin against Lord God? And he ran away. The same thing what we can find over here in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, when Apostle Paul appeals to us, the saints, the church age, and where he calls to them, Come out of from among them and be separated. Says the Lord, do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Therefore, if we are to be a man of God, separation must take place first. That's the very first thing. If you are a man of God or a vessel of God, first separation, separation, separation. Let us build up a wall of fortification from the details of this life or the lustful patterns of the old sin nature and in that you seek to spend your time to be like a doorkeeper in the tent of the tabernacles of God rather than being in the tents of wickedness. So he says that if we are to be a man of God, separation must first take place. When we separate, he reveals to us his divine fatherhood. And therefore, in Second Corinthians chapter 6, in verse number 18, and then he says in chapter 7, in verse number 1, you will be my children and I will be your God. First, separate. Only then we can pursue those characteristics which mark the man of God. And today people are not able to become to look upon what is that separation in Christ every time. What is that separation in truth? So, dear brethren, he says over here, that people who walk uprightly, these are the ones they are going to be as having authority upon their blood because they are going to be not dwelling in the tents of the wicked, rasha, criminals, so that you can look upon their thought process, their renovated head and their viewpoint of life, which is far away from discipleship program. So he said, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The word withhold is nothing but having pressure upon your blood as called to be the word mana that meant to say to deny or to make upon to restrict. So he says his blood to be the vigor and valor which has to be in the viewpoint of doctrine. So he said it is going to be withhold. So dear brethren, he says no good thing will he withhold. That which is agreeable in the sight of God, he will not be told, because they walk with Lord God uprightly. And, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee, because he knows that the very first thing is that, as Romans chapter 3 in verse number 11 emphasizes, that he will first understand God. But here he said, there is none who understandeth him, because the pressure which has been put constantly, constantly, to be far away from Bible doctrine. The same thing over here, if we can look upon in Exodus chapter 17 as well. The way how the people rebel against the plan of God. You know, he said, wherefore the people did chide with Moses, 
And they say, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? What is the meaning of the word chide? It's nothing but they don't want to renovate their head and they don't want to use their body for the purpose of which Christ our Lord our God has made them to work on this earth for Lord God's glory. That's the meaning of the word chiding. Because the word reb rub. What we can find meant to say they strive, they contend, they quarrel, they complain, they make up the things pertaining to stupidity on this earth. So the word child is nothing but they make up their head not to be renovating. If they renovated head, they would know what is the purpose of this flesh. You know, the meaning of this word, what we can look is, why the people, they are not seeking God. Why the people, they are not able to understand my Lord God. So here we can find over here in Numbers chapter 17, he said in this translation of this original Hebrew, he says that the first one, and they are murmuring, and they are murmuring, all the congregation of the sons of Israel to Moses and to Aaron in the wilderness. So here we can say how the whole congregation has murmured against Christ. And therefore, we can find over here in Exodus chapter 16 an emphasis of the word over here. In verse number 2, when they have been murmuring, the word child is nothing but first they don't want to renovate their head in their body. That's what we look upon Exodus chapter 17 in verse number 2. But here you have to look upon in Exodus chapter 16 in verse number 2. Here he says that these people they are murmuring. What is the meaning of the word murmuring? The word over here it has been called as lun, lun, l o o n, lun lian. Twice it has been used. So here the first time murmuring is nothing but they don't want to make up their body to be discipleship program. All the vigor and valor of their life, they never want to be discipleship program to Christ. What they do, they will go to chide against Lord God. And what they do, they love to tempt the things pertaining to Bible doctrine not to be as effective what Lord God the Father does it. And the way what they tempt, because they don't want to use their aleph energy to overcome the pressures of this life. So they tempt, they go to fall, they make up the things pertaining to stupidity of this life. So he said, the whole congregation of the children of Israel, they murmur. The words over here, what we can find emphasizing, they are murmuring, they are murmuring. Lin Luyan, Lin Luyan, Twice. And if ever, whenever we talk about discipleship program, people may be thinking what it is every day, more than one hour preaching, and every day asking them to grow up into grammatics, joining as disciples, the same murmuring what they did. So here he said they are murmuring, they are murmuring who? All of the congregation. Whenever they get the viewpoint which has to be brought into captivity for Christ, they don't do it. So he said, all of the congregation and upon whom these are called to be the sons of Israel, because they have been trained to become for the word of Lord God, no matter what may be the pressure, their entire life energy, there should be discipleship program for Christ, because they need to walk upright with Lord God the Father rather than being Jacob. And yet they fail. So he said, they're murmuring against whom? Moses and Aaron, the man who goes to give them great expression of joy in their body when they have thought process of Bible doctrine and the light bringer. Where they're, where they're having this? In the wilderness. The word wilderness is nothing but a brethren where every thought in their body is not renovated like Bible doctrine. And today we can find how much of murmuring process is happening in our pulpits. The congregations are not happy to learn great words of Bible doctrine. They don't want to get separated. All the days of this life, they don't want to get separated themselves from the worldly passions of this earth. They want to be partnership. Therefore, they don't become an example like Abraham. They don't become like an example of Joseph. They don't become like an example of reprimandation, what Paul gives in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. They are not separating. They're compromising and they're becoming knowingly the partner to the world. They're not separating. 
and today you can find out to what extent they have been not far away. All the days of this life they are not able to look upon the word of Lord God, but they have been still into the stupidity of this life. So here also, the entire congregation, what are they trying to do? They are able to make up their life, murmuring. The discipleship program in their blood, you can look, they are murmuring. Constantly, every time you look, they are murmuring. And today the same thing is happening in our pulpits, when the pastor teacher is able to preach for more than half an hour, a max 40 minutes in CSI churches, they love to murmur. They love to murmur against Moses and Aaron. Because they're residing in the wilderness, they haven't tested. One day in the presence of Lord God is greater than thousand days being spent in the tents of wickedness. Better be a doorkeeper in the temple of the living Lord of a God, so that your living flesh and your living heart can cry out for living Lord God, because there you come to live to know the truth. And what else will be great achievement on this earth? Do you think is there any other great achievement on this earth? As people may go on to think upon and look to enter into the Nobel Prize or the things pertaining to your records of Guinness of of this of this Guinness Book of All Records. You know, just throw them out. There is nothing greater. Though you may win a Olympic, a gold medal in a Olympic, just throw it off. Though you win a World Cup, throw it off. Your living flesh, your living heart should seek the living God every day. Every day they should seek it. Every day they should learn. Every day they should become the Lord's mind. Every day they should grow up for the Lord's glory. That's what they have been called to be every day. But dear brethren, you can look up to what extent they are far away from such everyday reality of truth. Every day. Every day, word by word, every day, line by line, every day, precept upon precept. If you are compromising and if you have been not able to separate from the world, then quite obviously you can look. Up to what extent we have been far away from the realities of the truth. Every day you have to take up your cross. Every day align with a perfect relationship with Lord God. Walk uprightly with Lord God. He said no good thing will be told back. They that walk with him in upright manner. Because the people who are going to walk with my Christ in upright manner. Will have an authority upon their blood. That they come to serve the Lord God accurately every time. Every day you have that. But then to dear brethren, how many days more you still want to live a life of lies? Every time like that wandering lunatic, what we can call traversing donkey under every green tree. The way how Israel was, the way how they tried, in chapter 15 of Exodus, they sing a great song in the same chapter of the end verses. For waters of Elim, they go to cry out and they make the Lord to murmur. They make against Lord, against Lord they murmur. Every time, they are like that wandering lunatics followed by the word what we can call like a donkey traversing under every green tree. Every time, it's as simple as to say, plowing to wickedness. Reaping iniquity, eating the fruit of lies, because they trust in their own wisdom. Just look how much you have been compromising into the world. Tomorrow your nature of compromising into the world and not able to separate yourselves and to make up to become the vessels of honor in the presence of Lord God the Father will make you all to pay a great fine. The fine and the cost of that will be into the eternal lake of fire. You have intended to search Lord God. You have intended to seek Lord God. That's what Romans chapter 3 says all about. Your mouth should be filled with Bible doctrine, but you open up your mouth, it is becoming like an open specular. A dying man tomb, the way how it smells rottenly. Why? Because you are plowing into wickedness. 
Why? Because you're reaping into iniquity. Why? Because you're going to become to eat your own lies as fruit. Every time a true Christian, where you can find, he would desire to come to learn the word of Lord God in the church. That will be a true Christian. The right work for searching out the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher who has to be a male believer in Christ, not a female. Female doesn't have the time because of a menstrual sickness. A male believer whose bona fide duty is to literally study the word of Lord God and teach, whether they hear or phobia, whether they love or like it or not. Day by day, learn the word of Lord God accurately. Day by day, know the word of Lord God accurately. That's what your number one priority is on this earth. What other riches you think on this earth could be equal to one single iota of the Bible? You lose that one single iota, you think you have lost the entire world, the riches of the world, the glories of the world, where Satan wants to tempt my Christ. In Luke chapter 4 or Matthew chapter 4, emphasizing, just bow down to me once. I have this all authority to whomsoever I wish, I will give. But Christ, the Lord of God, said, get behind the Satan. It is Lord God alone whom we shall bow down, whom we shall worship. Why? Because it is He who is the only Creator, and it is He who deserves all the glory from our lives, because He made us to fill the earth with the glory of His life on this earth. That's what we look over here. Every day He goes to give us this privilege to understand the Lord's mind. Every day He goes to give. Every time the special privilege for us is to know from morning till to the night what is the vexation doctrinal report we have, how many souls we lost. That's what your vexation report should be. But people are not happy to look upon that vexation report. The way the unbelievers are able to perish. They don't love to look upon such life. And they're simply happy to spend their time in vanity. Every day you have to cross track. And the life what you're living on this earth is simply vanity, dear brethren. Just walk. You're thinking, I will go down to the world. I will go and get some millions and billions of dollars of business. All this cannot be even equally compared to single iota of the Bible. One single iota of the Bible. First seek his righteousness and his kingdom. Then all these things shall be added unto you, says the word of Lord God. First seek his righteousness and his kingdom. Every day come back, take up your cross. Learn the Lord's mind. Do the will of Lord God the Father. Every day do it accurately. But what we're doing today, dear brethren, we are not seeking nor searching the Lord's mind. One day in the presence of Lord God the Father is great, but you're residing now in the area of wilderness. It is not a congregation to witness the truth in Christ. You're not able to look how much great information you have every day from the Bible to be taken. You're residing in the wilderness. And your brethren are making to think, are conspiring. What they're conspiring as we look over here in Genesis chapter 37, in verse number 18, when Joseph is coming, they thought that let's conspire and slay him. The word conspiring is called to be nakel. That meant to say we will make him the vigor and valor of his life, never to become like a grammatius, and never he goes to for the work of going and making disciples. You know, first you become like a teacher, and then you go to teach. Joining as disciple is just like a student. Growing up into grammatius is growing up like a teacher. And from that level of teacher, you go now to go and make disciples of all the nations. So, dear brethren, he said, Nakel, Grow up into grammatious level of thinking every day. Grow up into breath by breath discipleship program every day. 
But here they conspire who? The same church members, the same pastor teacher who doesn't know the Mobin kind of ministry, the teaching shepherds kind of ministry. Who are your enemies first? The pastor in your church. Because he's not feeding your spiritual growth to your spirit day by day in the original language of the scriptures of every Greek and Aramaic and make you all to learn and emphasize the point even a single iota of the Bible, don't miss it, because that even single iota of the Bible is far greater than all the riches of the world being put together on this earth. The single iota. Satan said, Bodham to me, but Christ the Lord of God said, No. Satan thinketh it has all the authority, and he says, To whomsoever I will, I will give this world. But Christ the Lord our God said, Get behind the Satan, I know how to get this world. The same authority what Satan claims, saying that I have that exusive authority, I have this power. Christ the Lord our God has given that power to you and me in this church age. The power to trample down the things pertaining to, uh, to serpents and reptiles. And if we can go further, he said, why are you just thinking about this exercise authority? He said, I have given you power over this Satan, even to be trampled under your feet. And he says, from exercise authority, he goes to give us the dunamis power. And now every believer, as 2 Timothy 1 7 emphasizes, they have the ability of dunamis power, the power of having, first of all, the things pertaining to agape love, to look and understand the demands of the word of Lord God. And then he has given the spirit of Sophronismas, because the Holy Spirit of God is first of a dunamis power, and then agape love, and then it goes to be Sophronismas mind, putting others into the senses what they have lost in the true spiritual life of Christ, making every human being to realize what for they have been made on this earth, and causing them to be led in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, and making them to look not only just the conviction ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, but now the things pertaining to above the conviction ministry, edification ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and then conclusion ministry, wherewith you shall not be conspired, but rather you are going to use your vigor and valor, as Grammatius program grown up and in return going and making disciples of all the nations. Such a great work you have. But people in the wilderness, they go to murmur against you. And that's what we read now here, Exodus chapter 16 in verse number 2. What murmuring they have? They have a constant murmuring to say that they will never use this vigor and valor, Lun Leon. What they do? They never use their vigor and valor of this life to become grammatious program in Christ. They never join as disciples. And the incurable pain of my Christ in Jeremiah chapter 15, in verse number 18, emphasizes that my pain has become incurable because the pastor teachers have failed to differentiate between precious and that which is vile. In Jeremiah chapter 15, in verse number 19, he said, Therefore thus said the Lord God, if you return, and then I will bring thee again, if you stand before me, and if you take forth the precious from the vile. The word precious is meant to say yakar. And that meant to say what? From the rising of the sun till the going turn of the sun, they shall have the renovated head in Bible doctrine. And the word while is called to be Zalal. What happens in the process of Zalal? People fail to dig and take every day what exact purpose of discipleship program has been told for us in this church age. What is the real purpose of life? Discipleship program that they fail to dig and take. That's the word called to be Zalal. Therefore, the pain of Lord God, he says over here in Jeremiah 15, 18, it is incurable. Why at least I made this man? Enosh, the word incurable, enosh. Man has been made not to be dying like the things pertaining to what he is intended after sin. He has been called to be an eternal fellowship with Lord God. Therefore, when man has failed and fallen for sin, Christ, our Lord our God, has given now his great 
the rich, great righteousness of imputed one called to be the plus are over the little righteousness what man is thinking on this earth to be for him a little righteousness is what man is thinking to be holier than the attitude but the great pleasure is all the time righteousness inculcated by Christ for our lives therefore second corinthians 5 emphasizes was 15 through 21 emphasizing he who was not sin was made sin on behalf of us so that we might get the righteousness of Christ inculcated for us being put for us it has been credited to our account so man after his fallen nature he has been given this righteousness and he cannot be frail again he has to be either targeting the life of enoch walking in this 365 days if he can let go 65 days for other causes of failures at least the remaining 300 days he has to walk every day with christ he has to have a challenging ministry like elijah because the pain of my lord god is incurable man has become in the image of adam to be again a sin nature that's what we find in genesis chapter 5 when he beget when adam starts to beget now man is able to be forming in his likeness because in the day that god created man in the likeness of god made he him male and female created he them and blessed them and called the name adam in the day when they were created adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness again the word salam the word salam and demut what we read having to look upon the things pertaining to no matter whatever may be the pressure man survives only if he is able to become a disciple to christ a disciple in making up his blood to learn bible doctrine that salam will become shalom with the lord god and that shalom is possible when a thought process is a disciple orientation in christ so dear brethren he said that likeness and that likeness after his image and then he says over here to emphasize what a manner of lord god it is because here lord god has given man to realize and to understand what the great frailty of jeremiah chapter 15 he said that it has become an incurable pain the pain is not able to be solved you know you make up a new thing on this earth for example a robo humanoids what are getting now and that should have been actually favoring the human race by any chance the program is been spoiled or corrupted or destroyed or manipulated by the evil of the world and now if they love to harm the entire creation then what will be the fate of the one who made such humanoid will he be happy he thinked that he made humanoids for good but they became a pain like incurable you know what is the meaning of the word pain over here in jeremiah chapter 15 he says that the word pain is called to be keb and the meaning of the word keb is nothing but a sorrow because these people haven't grown up like grammatures in their body these people haven't overcome to become like a grammatures in their body so you can look over here these people haven't become grammatures to the lord god and many people are not able to realize that how much to such an extent they have become failures in this life their bodies are not grammatures their bodies are not disciple oriented their bodies haven't been in the process of becoming what the word of lord god has called therefore they're going to be as an incurable pain therefore matthew 13:52 emphasizes joining as disciples and growing up into grammatures proverbs chapter 8 verse 34 emphasizes day in and day out the people who have been waiting eagerly at the door post of the temple of the living lord of god to learn doctrine they are the people that they are really blessed this is what happens every time the really blessed people are there 
are going to perform the will of Lord God the Father accurately every day because they have been growing up from discipleship program into grammar tears. You know, the human order is working as per the plan of the man who made it. They are not corrupted in their thinking, but today the, the viewpoint of human beings on this earth, which has to be in the image of God, which has to be in the likeness of God, they are not able to work in the process. Therefore, what you are going to look, you are going to find the way how they have been corrupted every day, every day being corrupted. And they are working contrary to the plan and to the will of God. In every arena you can look, they are not able to flee from youthful lusts. They're not able to seek righteousness of God. They're not able to find the piety of God, the glory of God. They're not able to understand the plan of God. Every time you look, the way how these people they're trying to, they're not able to perform the pallid wonders of Lord's mind. And that's what they're trying to do. If the programming of a human light gets corrupted, but here the condition clause if is it for a, for a humanoid, but here for men on this earth they have corrupted, therefore they search vanity, seeking after other vain gods, looking upon corrupted thinking because Satan has blinded the minds of these people, so that they shall not look into the glorious gospel of Christ. But whereas Romans chapter 8 emphasizes the point, the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of adult sons with an earnestly great desire. And who are the adult sons? It is you and me. We have to go to the world to deliver them from the lake of fire. So you can find over here in Romans chapter 8, emphasizing in verse number 19, it has to be earnest expectation, apokaradokia. The meaning of the word apokaradokia is nothing but your brethren that they have been eagerly waiting to come out of this pain which they are going through. The pain of Kaliul, which meant to say a wall of fortification for discipleship program which they have to come. There will be no renovation or solution for a man on this earth until he goes to become a disciple because that's the word Salem being made in his image. If you can look upon the DNA structure and you can understand as the new things they're going to invent and say that upon every DNA structure you find the name Yehovah coded upon them. So that may be one of the things what they love to look upon the so-called great inventions of scientific realm. But here the image itself of Salem, what you can look, it meant to say no matter whatever may be the pressure, you have been called to become a disciple to the Lord God and that is the sole reason why I have been given blood to pump in you. And then, if these people are not able to become that and realize the earnest expectation of the creation waiting for the manifestation of the adult sons, the creation is awaiting so that you can look and outweigh the things what we read, the sea creatures, the land creatures, all the things of the insects, all these things, you know, ultimately, after a man dies, you know, his body starts to decompose and the worms eat it. That's what we find, the worms under the soil. You know, if you can look upon, an elephant can be easily outweighed by the insects, though you may think insects are very few. Even if you have any sicknesses in your body, it's all because of the insects. They come out upon worms and the injuries that cause upon your body, you know that. So they are been eagerly waiting. But the real image is the creation is awaiting for the adult sons of Christ who have been free from such distorted thinking and they're making up to take up their cross every day and they're coming to do the will of Lord God the Father every day. The creation is awaiting for such man. And who they have to be? They have to be the people who have been able to lead. The thinking of them by the Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, in the same chapter of Romans 8, if you can look, he says in verse 16, The Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The word children meant to say technon. And the word technon over here is nothing but discipleship program. That's what you have been called to be 
in your vigor and valor so that you have to be that offspring of discipleship program to make every thought into captivity for Christ. Ben Elad, the word in the Hebrew. Ben Son Elad is what you can look discipleship program to get every thought into captivity for Christ. That's the meaning for the word technon in the Lord. And the same thing over here what we can look that the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons, the word huyos. So what happens over here in the huyos? Ben, and now the followed by the word called to be bar. And what do they do now? They have the true purpose of this life to say that no matter whatever it is, we shall be the people of the vigor and valor of doctrine in our life. That's what the ben bar is all about because the adult sons who have been grown up they have passed the test of discipleship program and now they make up their body to get every thought into the vigor and valor of doctrine ben abar this is what they have been called ben abar but today dear brethren people are not at all happy for the ben bar process of life so he says wake up in your body that has to be for the vigor and valor of doctrine the adult sons if the spirit of lord god should bear with your human spirit a witness that means to say sum martomai being put together then the very first thing what you have to be you have to pass the test of making up discipleship program so what is the test you have to be first making up your body to make it up to look into the viewpoint to get every thought into captivity for christ and then we can understand how they have to be in the process of making to be like a repeated witness for doctrine every time you come you have to respond and to have an answer to say being far away from distorted thinking in the vigor and valor so he said they have to be as a great testimony for christ because they have been said they have been given the holy spirit of god with our human spirit to be a witness that we are the things pertaining to first of all the technon children the word technon children ben elad if you are really being led by the spirit of lord god your brethren the first thing is you have to take up your cross and follow my christ as a disciple every day come to learn the word of lord god if you have been really led by the holy spirit of god that's the word ben elad it beareth witness you are the technon children of god ben elad everything has to be brought into captivity for christ ben elad you are called to be the technon children of god but today dear brethren we are not able to become the technon children of god the ben elad the process is not being done to really understand why you have to be first of all john 1 11 and 12 to them he gave the power to become the sons of god they were called to be the sons in the realm of what we can call in simple terms as uh, again ben elad the word technon to them he gave the power to become the sons of god ben elad you have been given the exousia authority to become ben elad that's the real beginning of a true Christian life after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore you have been given to be made in the image of God, in the likeness of God. Salam Dhamma. And the word Salam all the time they make you all to realize no matter how much may be the pressure in this life, you have to be a discipleship program in your thought process. You have to be a hundred percent discipleship program in the thought process. And today people are not happy for such thought process in the Lord God. Ben Elat. The discipleship program, Ben Elat. They're not able to realize every day how I have to become the disciples for Christ. Ben Elat. The thought process of discipleship program in the Lord, Ben Elat. 
You have been made to be making up your every thought in your blood to brought into captivity for Christ as Ben Elat. And people are not able to realize what is the process of Ben Elad in Christ. And that they're loving to feed upon lies of this earth. Weekly ones coming to the church, thinking that paying huge money monthly ones or yearly ones, they can be sanctified with peace, they can be having great things in this life. Oh dear brother, and you have to find the true shepherd. Christ, O oh Lord of God, is a great shepherd. The true shepherd will make you to realize that you're not understanding the plan of God. He will make you all to realize the things pertaining to Seeking or searching the will of Lord God. That's what the right bona fide duty of the true shepherd is all about because the spirit itself beareth witness with your human spirit that we are Ben Elad of God. As we look upon the word in Isaiah 11, emphasizing for unto us a child has been born, as many people would love to talk upon the day of Christmas, the word child over there is again Elad. Right from the day of his birth till the ministry of his work on this earth to be fulfilled, he was a disciple growing up into the process of a great teacher. Allah, again the same word, is every thought is a captivity to be, bought, to be brought into Christ to be as grown up grammatious program in the Lord. That's what you have been called. Discipleship program every time. Discipleship program every time. That's the make of plan of God for human beings on this earth. If not, you wouldn't have made human beings. The purpose of human beings, why he made, is to be ben elat. And there is no other process apart from that how we can make up your life to be meeting with God. Therefore, on this earth, a simple test what he would put for you. Are you faithful to the word of Lord God? Do you love him? Then keep his commandments. How we can be faithful? Take up your cross every day. Come to learn the word of Lord God every day, not weekly ones. And many people are thinking weekly ones of subjects are enough so that you can be great and good and perform all these things. The word of Lord God says, no. You are not going to eat weekly ones of physical food and say strong. It is not even the biblical order of the Bible which says morning and evening, but they don't eat two times, they eat thrice a day. Therefore, they're going to incur many, many sins and sicknesses in their body. But the word of Lord God, they have to eat all the day. They don't do it. But Lord God made man in his own image. Lord God made man in his own likeness. And in that he would say, you have been given the power to witness by the Holy Spirit of God if you have been as a ben elet to Christ. A ben elet unto the Lord. And today, dear brethren, many people are not able to become what is the word of Lord God to this church. In the plan of the church age, every believer, what they have to be in Christ, how they have to be in Christ, what they have to perform the things in Christ. Every time, what they have to be in the Lord. And every time, what they do, vanities of vanities on this earth. They love vanities, they perform vanities, they look upon vanities, they think upon vanities. And that vanity is all the time leading for the people to obey lies rather than truth. So dear brethren, he says, Spirit beareth witness with our human spirit that we are ben elad of God. And the creation is awaiting with an earnest expectation. Having to say the word earnest expectation over here, saying as apokaradokia and the word apokaradokia is nothing but the people who have been as kul keel that is it wants the world to establish once again a wall of fortification for discipleship program without discipleship program there is no deliverance for you on this earth 
Christ, O Lord of our God, did the same thing. He chose disciples, did his ministry with the disciples, and handed over the ministry to the disciples. The very first time as a Christians, what is your name in Acts chapter 11, in verse 23 to 26, at the place of Antioch? For more than a span of one year, those trained disciples were called to be Christians for the first time. In Acts chapter 9, in verse number 31, the perfect model of a church edified in the word of Lord God. They were walking in the spirit of the Lord God. They had great peace. The same example what Apostle Paul looks in Acts chapter 14 in verse number 21. The things which have been recorded in the third heaven. He comes back to this life over here and he does. He cannot owe my tears. He rendered those disciples to be fit and perfect in all standards of doctrine. And what is the earnest expectation of this world today? The creation build up once again such a discipleship program in the Lord God. When Christ, O Lord of a God, has been ascending into heaven, when the heavens are opened up, you can look the great commission given to this people, what it is. Go and make disciples, not converts of your tastes, but disciples, disciples, disciples. That's what the creation is awaiting with earnest expectation. Apocardokia. Kulkiyal, the things pertaining to distorted thinking in your brains, just throw it off. And Christ, O Lord of a God, is seeking them who can be in the process of becoming the will of Lord God the Father to the highest. And in every generation, Lord God the Father would provide those men who are capable of handling the word of Lord God in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, under the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher in performing the will of truth every time. They have this power, Kul Kial. They build up a wall of fortification to be far away from discipleship program. But today people are building such realities that they don't love for discipleship program and they're far away from discipleship program. But the creation itself is awaiting for the manifestation of discipleship program. They're earnestly, eagerly waiting. The way how our only born son has been dead, the woman, the father of the mother of that parent, would love to cry, weeping and wailing. So it is. That's what the creation is, weeping and wailing, by beating towards the mouth and saying that my only son is dead. In the same way, creation is waiting and telling, we want discipleship program. Because disciples are Christians. When there is no true Christian without the truth in them, then there is no deliverance for us. Therefore, your conduct of Christianity, fleeing from youthful lusts, being separated from the world, don't get compromised to the world, be separated from the world, look and know the truth, and the truth alone can set you free. That's what a true Christian is all about. Like a mirror in the word of Lord God, he would shine. Such a great life you have on this earth to be performed in the Lord God. Such a great life you have. And what we are finding today on this earth, no doctrine at all. And yet, there are many people on this earth who are not able to realize what the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of these adult sons of the Lord. Dear brethren, life is too short for us to spend our time in search of vanity. So wake up. The creation is awaiting. It is waiting for the manifestation of such adult sons who are going to be the double renovated process of doctrine, Ben Ba'ar. In their body and in their vigor and valor, they have nothing but they get every thought into captivity for Christ. And this captivity of Christ believers would go to build up a wall of fortification and make up discipleship program to be number one priority on this earth. Number one priority on this earth. So dear brethren, the very first thing what you and I have been called, Look into the standards of Christ. Look into the thinking of Christ. And yet, many people haven't learned the importance of doctrine in this world. 
Know the truth. The truth alone will set you free. The people are perishing out there. That's what we illustrated for you long back. When an unbeliever is been dead, he doesn't have a hope. But we are not ignorant. We have a hope. But that unbeliever is dead and he has been surrounded by Christian homes and the Christian people would love to console him. And they, love would give, they would love to give him all mannerism of care and concern. But while that unbeliever is alive, they don't go to share a gospel. That's what your life is. He was been waiting with an earnest expectation for the manifestation of the adult son. Your mouth should have been opened up as divine oracles. Your mouth should have been seasoned with grace and salt. But your mouths have been opened up before them as open specular, the tomb of open speculars. Why will they believe Christ? And when they have been dead in their home, now we are going to console them by giving them the necessary stuff of care. Who cares with that care? Because once that soul is gone without knowing Christ, it is going to end up in hell. There will be no peace. And once you die without Christ, therefore the greatest decision of life on this earth, what do you think of Christ? Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Christ, the Lord of glory. He is Christ, the Lord of all glory. That's what your life is all about. And today, dear brethren, people are not at all able to realize what is the intention of the thinking of this biblical teachings in our pulpits. They don't have any intentions at all. They don't find teaching shepherds. They find dumb dogs which cannot bark. These are dogs which eat their own vomit, compromised in the world, looking for the things of the world, having partnership with the world. And they're getting barred of their own blessings. Because first thing begins in Christ's separation. When you don't have separation in the word of Lord God, people will never know the stages of growth. From milk to bread, from bread to strong meat. As Christ our Lord our God said, man does not live by bread alone but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of Bible doctrine that is called to be my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't it a great privilege for us to serve our Master of our Lord? What is that you are waiting for on this earth to think? Look upon Christ, the author and finisher of our faith who has so many things for us to teach every day. The great Lord of our God who has great many things for us to learn. And that why it is we want to live a life that which is incurable pain. Why at least he made man. He repented long back in Genesis 5. He gets the flood. And today people are still thinking, God the Father is happy. <laughs> but the world has become like an imperious warish woman, rather being exposed to one husband. The world is able to walk, looking upon the stupid details of this life as lovable, though the word of Lord God says, they are absolute sin. Dear brethren, the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons earnestly. They want to have a wall of fortification for discipleship program. If the churches are not able to wake up and become discipleship program of orientation of Acts 11 to the true definition of Christian in Antioch for the first time we're called, then you should cross-check and look upon your lives whether you're really Christians or not. Better to die than to live such a life. 
holding fast not to integrity in the truth of the word of Lord God. What life is that? A life of lies is not a life of intention of Christ for you given. Lord God the Father intended all the time for you to live a life of truth. And if you're still far away from the life of truth and living a life of lie, what is that you have on this earth to do? Apart from knowing lies in this world. A single iota of the Bible, what you can look in this world, riches and honor and glory cannot be equal in the scales of weight. One single iota of the Bible will outweigh everything in this world. So get separated from the world, live a life of truth for Christ, and make up your life to the doctrine on this earth. And still how many days more you want to live a life of lies on this earth, as we have been called to be residing in this church age, as great disciples to the Lord's mind. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost be with us, to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. The section of truth falls for very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace must to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall learn to apply to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teach us, the grace must to carry so thorn logam. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the Dharma Truma witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharma Truma witnesses in willing trinity, if out of the Bible in our hands. And the number two Dharma to my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not very besides nature, the entire and the cost to be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. Because, dear brother, life is too short for us to spend our time in vanity. And as we spend our time in vanity, we don't have the life. That's as good as to live a life like animals, without truth, without Christ. Just like a living soul. But Lord God the Father intends you to be quickening spirit. At the other end, the creation is awaiting for you. Earnest desire. Manifestation of the adult sons. When they shall come, when they shall come, and when we shall be set free. You can be sent when you are prepared. You cannot be prepared if you don't come to take up your cross every day and learn the word of Lord God after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ under the conviction ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, lead us to the praise of His glory. In his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for the great privilege, O Lord, which you have given to us to your fellowship with thee through the world. What a great depth of your word, O Lord. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, O Lord. No heart can even perceive if it were not been taught for us by the Holy Spirit of Lord God. How great and pallid wonders of your word, O Lord. Insects can easily outweigh every human being on this earth, the entire creation of man on this earth. And how much more, O oh Lord, depth is your word. How much more, O oh Lord, we have to sanctify ourselves to look upon even still great pale wonders of your word by separating from the world and to become like a vessel of honor in each and everything what you'd give and do for us. Enlighten us, O oh Lord, to look upon the way how Apostle Paul could have into your third heaven vision and teach many things after that coming to this people by making them to be Hikana o Matthias. By the Spirit of the Lord of our God, you have given so much of valuable things for us in this completed canon of Scripture, so that when we dig deep and look and learn and understand, we can realize how pallid wonders of your word have been there. And, O Lord, you are going to give more for them who ask more. We ask only one thing, O Lord, 
greater than any flesh of a lust on this earth. We want only one thing, to be used the blood of this body, for knowing your word deep down and making all the days of this life to be a living monument for witnesses and testimonies of your word. So, Father, how pure is your word, O Lord, we love it, and our living flesh and living heart seek only for the living Lord our God. Help us to search us diligently, accurately to the word, and help us to understand your mind, so that we could become your pallid wonders of truth, and make each and every believer to realize and to understand the great unique things of your doctrine. So, Father, being grateful and thankful for this privilege, once again given us the word of Lord God, we pray, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord, may Lord God, the Holy Ghost, challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord, Amen.